Well, the bands are pretty busy today, and you may notice that this is a little bit different setup than you normally see in my truck. I've got the 705 in here as a little bit of a test setup, and we're going to do a little bit of programming with the voice recorder. And we're going to do this, well, for all of you, but specifically I'm hoping I can help out another YouTuber that I met at Huntsville this year. So come on and take a look. Hey everybody, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Today we're going to look at programming the voice recorder on the IC705. And as I said in the introduction, I met another YouTuber when I was at Huntsville this year. I met a bunch of YouTubers, but specifically I met Carlos, and he is KD9OLN, and his YouTube channel is called Life at Terminal Velocity. Carlos does uh, parachute jumping, so he's an instructor, and he also operates Parachute Mobile. Now, probably not a large percentage of you are going to ever operate Parachute Mobile, but you may get the chance to work somebody Parachute Mobile. And we're going to look at the voice recorder on the 705, because Carlos is going to be changing his radio or upgrading his radio to a 705 at some point in the future here. And this is going to be a really nice way for him to record his QSOs. And it's also a really nice way for recording your QSOs, whether you're mobile or portable or you're, wherever you're using the 705. I've done some videos on using the voice recorder for the 7300 and also the 7100. But the 705 uh, has a nice feature that's not available on the 7100, at least, to pre-record your QSOs. And you'll see what I mean about that in a minute. And I'm going to use a feature that I haven't used before, which is the push-to-talk record feature. So let's take a look at how that works. First of all, you do have to have an SD card, well, a micro SD card installed in your 705 in order for this to work. And another thing that's a little different on the 705 is you don't go to the set menu to program the recorder functions. They've actually put it in the record menu, which kind of makes more sense, but it's a little different than the other ICOM rigs. So let's take a look at those settings. You're going to press menu, and then on page one of the menu, you see the record option here. So we're going to touch record, and then right on the first page, you can start the recorder right from here and play and so forth, but there's this recorder set option. So we're going to touch that, and we're going to go back up to the top here. The default options for pretty much everything are going to be fine. We're only going to change a couple of things. You want to do direct for your record audio. You can also change this to be monitor. We're not going to talk about that today. It really only adds a little bit of a delay. Record receive condition, and we're going to set that to squelch auto. What that means is if the squelch is closed, it'll stop recording. Well, it'll pause the recording. And then when the squelch opens, it starts recording again. If you set this to always, it'll just keep recording once you've started the recorder, whether the squelch is open or not. So it saves a little bit more SD card space. File split. I like this on. This can be kind of a personal preference thing, but I find this is really helpful to help find QSOs. And we'll look at that when we look at this on the computer later. But uh, file split on means that when you switch from transmit to receive and back, it's going to start a new file. It'll end the file that's currently recording for receive, if you're receiving. And then when you start transmitting, it'll start a transmit audio file. So your transmit audio and receive audio are each going to be in separate files. If you turn it off, once you start recording, it just keeps recording in one big file. So I like this on, and again, I'll show you how that can help you find QSOs later. And then here's the big one, PTT auto record. So push to talk, auto record. The default for this is off. I'm going to change this to on, 
And what this does is if you set that to on, when you take the microphone, as soon as you push, push to talk, it'll start recording. If you don't use that, then you've got to go into the quick menu or you can go into the record menu and start the recorder. Now, the nice thing about the push to talk auto record, it will also automatically stop recording when you make a call or you respond to a call then it'll start recording and then it will record for any for as long as the receive audio as long as you're receiving a signal it will continue to record if the squelch closes it will pause for up to 10 seconds and if no more signals come in then it'll stop recording and it won't start again until you keep push to talk again if you're on HF where you don't really use squelch and you just have it open, it will record for 10 minutes and then stop if you don't transmit again in that 10 minute interval. So it's kind of nice. It'll just automatically end the recording if you're not making any more contacts. And then a feature that's not available in the 7100 and they added this, they actually added it in the 7300, but the 705 has this too, pre-record for push to talk auto record. So what this is, when you push to talk and it starts recording, it will actually save a receive audio file for, in this case, 10 seconds prior to when you press push to talk. Now, if you, the setting for this, you can turn that off where it doesn't do it at all. And then you've got 5, 10, or 15 seconds that it'll record prior to when you press push to talk. I'm actually going to set that up to the full 15 seconds. So if somebody's call sign is in there, then you'll make sure you get the, hopefully get the whole call sign. So in other words, if somebody is calling you and you're replying, somebody else is calling CQ, when you push, push to talk, you'll have an audio file there just ahead of the transmit audio file that will have that previous audio. So that's a really cool feature. All right, so those are the only two things that you need to change from default. But let's go through all of them again just to make sure. So direct for the transmit record audio, squelch auto for the record condition, file split, I like that on. And then the push to talk auto record is on. And then I've set my auto record prior to push to talk to 15 seconds. So those are the settings. So we'll get back out of here. And let's turn the volume up. I keep wanting to use this knob because it's the top knob on the 7100. I wish they'd have kind of kept those the same. And there was that guy doing uh, Parks on the Air, and there's a couple of contests today. There's like three contests, so I don't really want to work the contest, but hopefully we'll find somebody we can work here. And let's say we've got our power all the way up. Wow, two Bravo hotels. All right. I'm going to be tuning around for a while. I may cut some of this out. We'll find somebody to work here. Thank you very much. QRZ. Suki Poda, Suki Kilo Echo 8, Papa Tango, X-ray, QRZ. Whiskey Alpha 2, Italy, Victoria, Denmark. We got Whiskey Alpha 2, India, Victoria, Denmark. You are a 5 5 in the park. QSL, QSL, we're QRP here, just outside of Kansas City. This is uh, WA2, Italy, Victor, Denmark. Thank you for the contact. Roger, roger. Do you have both park numbers? Uh, negative, negative. Do not have a park number. Roger, park number Kilo 2574 and Kilo 4572. Again, Kilo 2574 and Kilo 4572. QSL? QSL, QSL, thanks for the parks. WA2, Italy, Victor, Denmark. 
Very good, very good. Thank you for the contact. You have a great day. Keep chasing, okay? Thank you for activating. 73. 73, QRZ. Okay, we got somebody. I'm going to squelch this so that this will stop. All right, well... All right, I was really hoping we could do a few more contacts, but we've got enough in here that I can show you some of the features that you get from this with the 70, yeah, with the 705. Let's go take a look at what this looks like on the computer. All right, we've taken the micro SD card and brought it inside, put it in the computer, and you can see that in the card there is just one folder in the root called IC-705. This is a folder that the 705 creates when you format a card in the radio. So if we go into that folder you'll see a whole bunch of folders here and we're going to ignore all of these for right now except for this one that says voice. And if I go into that folder you will see a whole bunch of additional folders and if you look at the name the format of the name is year month day so this tells you the date that this folder was recorded or created or more importantly the date that the recording files are in this folder are from that date so the radio automatically creates a new folder for each date and you can see here, I go all the way back to 2020 and all the way up to 2022. A 32 gig SD card can hold lots of audio files, so I haven't really bothered to delete any of my older files here. I probably should do that to clean up, but that'll be for another day. The one we're interested in in particular here is September 10th, because that's when we did those recordings in the truck. And in this folder now you see a bunch of WAV files and the format of those file names is year, month, day, underscore, hour, minute, second, which is when this file was recorded. So you got the exact time that every file was recorded. Now before we go too much further in this, with this, I want to copy these folders, a few of them, onto my computer so I have them on my local hard drive and then we'll continue on with them from there. All right, we've got them copied onto my hard drive. I created a file, or excuse me, a folder called Audio 705 and I put a few of the folders in here. So let's go into that September 10th folder and now you'll notice the file information is a little different in Windows, if a folder contains nothing but audio files, instead of displaying the date that it was saved and created and file size, it displays information more pertinent to audio files. So this is number, I believe that's track number, title, which would be like a song title, contributing artists, and album. Well, since this is not from a CD, these are not terribly useful but let's take this title and expand that out and see what we have for that though the 705 actually creates a song title for every recording well a kind of a song title and it says ic705 recorder data voice recorder data that's a little bit useless because it's the same every time then you'll see here 1422.53 USB. So that's the frequency I was on and the mode, upper sideband. And then we see this RX. That tells us this is a receive audio file. And then it's got the date and time, which is a duplicate of over here. And then if we look at the next file down, we'll see that it's TX, date and time, and RX and so on. And they kind of alternate here because every time we transmit, it started a new file, if you remember from the settings that we set. So this is good, but it's still not really everything that's gonna help us 
go through these to try to find contacts. So in Windows, if I right click on one of these columns, I can actually change what shows up in here. So I'm going to get rid of this track number because that makes no sense. I'm going to get rid of contributing artists because I don't really care about that. I'm going to get rid of album because I don't really care about that. So now I've got this and the title. But let's look at something that might be helpful, and that's length. And this is the length of the recording in seconds. And I'm actually going to put that before the title here. So 15 seconds, zero. And you'll notice here, this is a transmit file. And you notice that the receive file right before it is 15 seconds. Remember, we set that pre-record amount to 15 seconds. So when I hit push to talk, and here I actually just literally clicked push to talk. I didn't say anything, so my transmit recording is actually zero seconds. But as soon as I clicked it, it saved this file that was 15 seconds of audio before that. And if we kind of go down here and look, here's another receive file that's 15 seconds right before a transmit. So if you just scan through these, you can pretty quickly say, okay, I heard something and then I transmitted. So this is probably the beginning of a contact. And let me bring up VLC. Bear with me one second here. Because I use VLC Media Player for most of my stuff. So let me put this over on the right and hopefully you'll see this okay with how I have my screen set up because I've got this zoomed in a little bit. Um, sorry if this is a little bit squished but I'm trying to make these letters big enough so you can see them. So if I take this receive, transmit, receive, transmit Let's just take this file and we'll go to here and see what we have. And we'll pop them in here. WA2 India Victor Delta Mobile. Mobile station go. Whiskey America 2 India Victor Delta Mobile and QRP. Okay, mobile, can you repeat your call sign a couple times? All right, that was actually, and if I if I take some more files here, I think you'll find that was one that I didn't actually wasn't able to connect because I'm only running the 10 watts and it wasn't enough, but. You get the idea there. Now, there's one, whoops, there we go. There's one other piece of information or group of information that the 705 saves. And let me move this title over as small as I can make it. And this is something that my friend Carlos is really going to like when he starts doing some parachute mobile with the 705. So let's click on the columns again, and it's not in the list here, but at the bottom, if we go to more and we scroll down through here, there is a field called comments. And we're going to click on that and put the comments field in. Uh, there we go. And let's expand this. Well, we actually. There's a bunch of other stuff here, but not all of it's filled in. Some of this is only filled in in DV modes. But this is really interesting. So in the comments, we see a latitude and a longitude. Because the 705 has the GPS built in, we actually get our latitude, longitude, and our altitude in meters at the time that we started this file. So this is, the, this is what the conditions were, and that's the same for this frequency, by the way. These are the conditions at the beginning of this recording. So if, for example, if you start recording while you're receiving, and then you start 
tuning the tuning knob around, you're going to be changing your frequency, but this is the frequency at the time it started. This is the latitude, longitude, and altitude at the beginning of this. And then over here we see S1. That's the signal strength the receiver was seeing at the time this recording started. And then if we look on the transmit, you'll see a 100% here. That means we were transmitting with 100% power. So I was putting out 10 watts. And then you see at the beginning of this recording is S3 and this one's S5 and so on. Now you'll see more data out here to the right. This is latitude and longitude of the received station. This only works if you're on D-Star. If you're on D-Star, you would actually see here the call sign, my call sign, the receive station call sign, and the other station's latitude, longitude. If you're not in D-Star, all these other fields are blank. But this is pretty cool to have your altitude. So Carlos, I hope you're gonna like this because on mine, you'll notice the altitude is pretty much constant here and just probably just GPS fluctuations. I think if we watch this on uh, Carlos's recordings, we should see this decreasing at a pretty steady rate as he's coming down. So this is a really nice feature for doing portable operations. And the altitude here for Carlos is great for parachute mobile, but the latitude and longitude, if you're doing like rover activations, maybe during a VHF contest, or you know any any other kind of thing like that you can take these latitudes and longitudes and then you can get your grid square from these so you can figure out what grid square you are in to make sure you're logging the right grid square or you know if you're just out doing portable operations and you want to figure out where you were during each one you can come back and actually create your logs from this um, when you get done so let's see if we can find the one let's see let's look here's my length of 15 seconds so I think this one might be the one where we actually made the contact let's let's check here and see we'll dump these into VLC um, sorry that's off of your screen Whiskey Alpha 2, Italy, Victoria, Denmark. We got Whiskey Alpha 2, India, Victoria, Denmark. You are a 5 5 in the park. QSL, QSL, we're QRP here just outside of Kansas City. This is uh, WA2 Italy, Victor, Denmark. Thank you for the contact. Uh, negative, negative. Do not have a park number. QSL, QSL, thanks for the parks. WA2 Italy, Victor, Denmark. Very good, very good. Thank you for the contact. You have a great day. Keep chasing, okay? Thank you for activating. 73. 73, QRZ. All right, so there's our complete contact. You notice we got the park number. I'm hoping that audio came over. It's actually, I'm hearing it a little bit weak. Uh, he was a little bit weak to me during that contact so i'm hoping you're hearing that okay but we got the park numbers we got his call sign and i didn't have to write anything down while i was sitting there in the truck so this is something that i have whoops didn't mean to hit that sorry this is something that i have used with the 7100 and now starting to use with the 705. And this is the first time I've used that push to talk record feature. And I really like that. So I think anytime you're doing portable operation, if you get a pile up and you're working on a summit or at a park, even if you're logging with paper or on a mobile device or whatever, if you've missed something or things are getting ahead of you, you can always come back and get this after the fact. 
Or, as I said, if you're hanging from a canopy, you can uh, record all this after you get on the ground and get all your log data. Now, there is one other kind of problematic thing with this. I can see all this on the screen. There is not a real easy way to copy this into a file, at least from anything that Windows provides. There is a command line program called File List, which will take a directory and you can specify metadata like title or comments or length and file name and it will create a comma separated text file with all of this information that you can load into like an Excel spreadsheet uh, or a Google sheet and then you can get all of the data and copy it down or print it out or you know sort it whatever you want to do with it I'm not going to go through the process for doing that here. I will put a link to a YouTube video in the description. Uh, I did find a YouTube video, and the gentleman's name escapes me right now who did this, but he put up a video showing how to use this program called File List, which will take all of this data that you're seeing here and put it in a text file so that you can transcribe it or like in the spreadsheet, you can take the latitude and longitude and convert them to grid squares or whatever. So I'm not going to cover that because there's other people that have covered that, but that'll kind of fill in the final gap here. So that's it for the recorder. I really do, as I said, like the push to talk feature so that you can actually see the 15 seconds prior and it automatically starts the recording. I don't have to remember to go in and do that. And uh, again, any kind of portable operations, I think this is a really super feature of the 705. And definitely check out Carlos's channel. Uh, again, I'll have a link to the description and should have it right on the bottom of the screen here, but I'll have a link to his channel in the description. Really fun, and if you follow him, you can uh, look on his channel, comments on his videos for how to find out when he's gonna jump again. And even if you're not going to work Parachute Mobile, you might have a chance to work somebody Parachute Mobile. And I haven't had the chance to do that yet, but I'm planning on working him on 20 meters the next time he's on HF. So that's it for this time. I'm Tom, WA2IVD. This is Ham Radio, A to Z. As always, thanks for watching. If you've got comments or whatever, please put them in there. Updates, things that I may have said wrong anything like that. I always like to hear from you. Please click on that like button and please subscribe because that helps out the channel. Thanks again and 73. Okay, let's turn him down a little bit. Hey everybody, it's Tom, WA2IVD. And I don't remember what the hell that guy's call sign was that I was just going to tell you about. Carlos, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't remember your call sign.